Welcome everyone, uh, Maximizing Visual Studio Code with DDAV. This is all about your tooling. Right? This is all about setting up Visual Studio Code, um, mainly for like module development. Um, I'm a big fan of PHP CS and PHP STAM and um, running PHP unit tasks and you know, doing all the stuff we should be doing before we run Git out and Git connect. So what we're going to do today is, um, I'm assuming everyone's familiar with DDAV, everyone's familiar somewhat with VS Code. So really, the point of today is to kind of demonstrate um, how um, I feel is a really good way to set up VS Code to make you as efficient as possible. So that's kind of the goal. Um, about me, uh, that's me. Um, I love doing this. This always makes me laugh, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to go to uh, regular old chat GPT-4. Um, who is Mike Anello in the Drupal community? This normally turns out okay, so we'll see. <laughs> You're a brave man. Yeah. <laughs> there was a bug last week of it just spitting out gibberish, so. Yeah. Yeah. Am I online still? Yeah, well, I, I, I loaded this, so. All right, we'll come back. To it, I think the, the webs are experiencing a little downtime. Let me, no, I'm, I'm going to be reload just in case. Because if I, maybe I have an old token or something. No? All right, we'll come back. Someone remind me to come back to that. <laughs> um, so, real quick promotion. I do have a, a long form uh, professional module Drupal professional module development uh, course, uh, 15 weeks. I'm teaching it right now. I think we're just ending week four, starting week five. Um, two half days a week, online. Um, a couple of alumni of my beginner class are sitting in here as well, at least two, right? Yeah. Um, so we then, so basically what I'm gonna show today is one of the things we cover in the first week or two of this course. Um, and then we get into all that stuff. So if you're interested, uh, DrupalEasy.com or talk to me later or Gwendolyn is at our, um, our table. Okay, so here are the extensions that we're going to be talking about today. Um, the Remote Explorer plus Dev Containers, and this is really for me, this is the thing that unlocks a lot of really cool functionality. Uh, PHP Sniffer and Beautifier, PHP Spam, Drupal Smart Snippets, PHP IntelliFence, uh, this extension really uh, brings a, a VS Code not all the way up to what PHP Storm does for PHP, but pretty far along. Uh, PHP Debug and PHP Unit Test Explorer. There's a couple others that I have installed as well that we'll talk about later. That, but this is really the core that I think uh, you know, Drupal developers should have. Um, and that's it's just kind of a pet peeve of mine. I always mention settings that local about PHP that you should be using it locally if you're not. So, um, to use this stuff, and for what I'm, what I'm going to be showing you is, uh, you know, we need DDAV, VS Code, um, a Drupal 10 uh, site up and running, importantly, with the Drupal core dev dependencies. These core dev dependencies are what's going to get you the PHP CS and the Drupal coding standards. It's going to get you PHP STAM and all the Drupal extensions for PHP STAM. It's going to get you the ability to run PHP unit tests as well. So a lot of what I'm going to demonstrate today will not work unless you have the core dev dependencies installed. Um, you know, some comfort using the command line. I think for if you're doing professional Drupal this day, that's kind of uh, these days it's a must have. Um, and a basic understanding of Drupal coding standards. You know, it's having the knowledge that when we write code, especially code that we're going to contribute back, we should all be using the same style and formatting. So it's easy for us to read each other's code. And that stuff using like you know, using a consistent number of spaces to indent. Things like that. Um, and then some knowledge of X debug and step debugging and just what does that even mean? Um, so number one thing, there's no best way to configure all this stuff. Um, this is you know, somewhat opinionated. And I think my opinion has some, has some weight because I teach a lot of people and I interact with a lot of developers and I see how they're doing things. So I think this is a pretty good way of, of doing it. But 
I, I see developers who are doing things slightly different than this as well, and that's fine if it works for them. I'm gonna show you what works for me and what I think is easily transferable to other members of your team. Because I try to keep things as consistent as cl and clean as possible. So take what I'm gonna present today as a good place to start, but iterate on it if it makes sense for you. Um, and this stuff is a moving target, right? Because as new tools and new techniques become available to us, as there are new you know, potential VS Code extensions, you know, this is not like set it today and forget it for three years. Although some of you might do that. And that's fine as long as it still works for you. But this stuff is always evolving. Okay. Um, yeah, so I did, yeah, actually, let me go back. This is a good place to talk about. There's no right way to configure all this stuff. Uh, Drupal.org has got a pretty good page here in documentation, you know, configuring uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's got a lot of stuff. It's got snippets of code. Um, but this is JSON for configuration of, of Visual Studio Code. Um, a lot of what you're going to see today kind of starts with this base and adds on to it. You know, there's a bunch of recommended extensions as well. Um, and you'll see some of these are, um, are consistent with what I'm going to show you. Um, you know, PHP Sniffer Purifier, Smart Snippets. Well, okay, two of them. Um, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to show you more because, like I said, one of the things that's going to unlock a lot of our extra functionality is these first two. Um, and what these first two do is it allows Visual Studio Code to bypass your host operating system and connect directly with that DDEV web container. Now, to be fair, almost everything I'm saying today will work for Lambda, will work for Doxel, there'll be little you know, configuration changes here and there, but Remote Explorer and Dev Containers allows Visual Studio Code to directly connect to a Docker container. And once VS Code is talking to that Docker container directly, the host operating system, which is Mac OS and my, uh, you know, my, for me, doesn't matter. Which means all the configuration for the extensions, you know, when that extension has to run PHPCS, which we want to run inside the container, we're already inside the container as far as VS Code is concerned. So this is really, that's kind of the secret, not secret sauce, but that's the, the magic sprinkles that allows all this stuff to happen. Um, so I'm going to show this in the demo in a second, but I will mention there is a really good DDEV manager extension for Visual Studio Code. But once you're jacked into the matrix here, you're already past. But DDEV is operating in Mac OS, and it's issuing you know, commands from your Mac OS. Uh, from Mac, oh, I'm sorry, from your host operating system. Once VS Code is talking directly to the containers, DDEV has no meaning, right? It's, it's, it's like, I know that's really small, but that big. So here's the site I'm using. You know, once I DDEV SSH in, you know, this is kind of like what VS Code is doing. We are literally SSHing in from VS Code into the container. Once you're inside the container, you know, DDEV commands you know, DDEV drush the R, or see, imagine that's a CR. <laughs> you don't have to run DDEV drush the R inside the container, because you're already there. You just run drush the R. So that's why, yeah, I don't know how we got that there. Whoops. That's why, as, as cool as this is, um, and it's, it's, it's great, it's solid, it does a lot of stuff. Um, allows you to add um, add-ons and you know, extra containers to your project very, very easily. Um, you know, once you're jacked in, not really any use for it. All right, so let's just take a look. So I've got, what I've got here is a, um, a Drupal, uh, and actually here I do want to close that and just kind of show you how this works in a different way. Uh, open recent, there we go. So this is a site I spun up yesterday. Uh, I taught a full length class, kind of the same material yesterday. This is the traditional way of using Visual Studio Code. Right, I am looking at my FLDC 2024 directory and I, I did that a little bit fast, but you, can, you saw me, I opened it. You know, from my site's directory, I know that's really tiny. 
and that's you know till the site's FLDC twenty twenty four. So that's a Mac OS path. So as of right now, Visual Studio Code is reading files off of the Mac OS file system. What the dev containers extension combined with the remote explorer extension does is it gives us this guy right here, remote explorer. And by default, remote explorer just gives you the ability to connect to remote environments directly using SSH, which still might be very useful for some of you. You know, if you want to have VS code, you know, connect to a dev server somewhere, you can do it with this. That's kind of cool. But when you add the dev containers extension, it gives you this other option. And it shows you, it talks Docker. So it basically queries Docker and says, hey, what containers are on this machine? And you can see the one without the icon, that's an idle one. But all these with the play button are DDEV containers that are up and running. And You know, this is the DDEV web container for the same project. Here's the database container. So we can connect to any Docker container we want. Obviously, we're going to connect to the web container. So I'm going to hit that little arrow button. And now notice, it'll take a second to load everything. Well, pretty fast. Notice that it doesn't say FLDC24 anymore up there. It's basically telling me, you know, I'm connected to that Docker container uh, via Rancher Desktop. So now, we're looking at files not in my host operating system, but directly in the container. So everything now is relative not to, you know, uh, slash user, slash Michael, slash site, slash whatever. Everything is relative to, you know, the containers file system. var www.html. And the great thing about that is, That's where my tools are. That's where PHP Stan is, because I installed Drupal Core Dev Dependencies. So to run PHP Stan, I mean, this is the path. And now that I'm in here, you know, it's all, obviously, it's all the same files, because DDEV and Docker are doing their thing, they're syncing between the host operating system and the container. But when I go to the terminal, you know, as far as VS Code is concerned, this is the only place that it can see. It can't see Mac OS. It can't see my host operating system. It's inside the DDEV web container. So that's awesome. Because what that lets us, lets us do is now we can run stuff like PHP CS, web, modules, contrib. I'm going to use a serial module, which I've been, let's say, arguing with the past couple of weeks. You know, so now I'm, I'm doing PHP CS. Um, or coding standards checks against this file. And you can see there's an indentation issue and in case break, you know, whatever. But that stuff's just running now. You know, if I wasn't in the container like that, how would I run that? If I was from Mac OS 10, clear that. If it's even bigger, let me just make this. Is that better? Yeah. I would have to go like ddev.phpcs web, and I'm not even sure this is going to work, and I'll explain why if it doesn't. I don't do this that often. No, it does work. Okay. Sometimes, you know, ddev dot is the same as ddev execute, which is basically like saying, hey, ddev, execute whatever I tell you next inside the web container. Right, and sometimes, it's not so much anymore. Older versions of ddev would have an issue if you pass an extra argument, pass the command, this one didn't. But Outside the container, in order to run PHPCS, I would have to run ddev dot blah 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 whatever. And here's the key: a lot of the extensions that I'm going to show you, they can run binaries if you give them the path to it. They cannot run binaries if you give them something like ddev dot. So that's why the remote container and the dev the remote explorer and dev container extensions are so important. Because they get us in, on the inside, where everything's just a you know a path away. Yeah, this okay. This is this always happens. 
I'm with you, right. see, I'm not sure why, but so anyway. All right, so let's see some more of these. Um, let me look at my slides before I go too far. I end up always talking ahead of my slides in this presentation. Yeah, all right. So normally what you have to do is you can't fire up VS Code and connect to a container that's not running for obvious reasons. It's not running. So normally what I have to do and what I do do is I open up that green terminal you saw. I navigate to my project. I do a DDEV SSH. And then I you know, just kind of leave that aside. Then I go to VS Code. Once my project is, once those containers are spun up, then I can launch VS Code, select the container, and jack right into the matrix. Um, you will note, and I don't know because I just did this yesterday, I probably don't have any. Well, there, I actually left these. When you connect to a container, sometimes um, those extensions need to be installed inside the container as well. If they're running the command inside the container, You'll see this little install and container. So even though you know we've got a local installed, which means the extensions in here are installed in my local copy of VS Code, but some of them, you know, the ones that are going to run are the ones that are inside of this container. So sometimes in here, you'll see that they're grayed out or something. And all that basically means is that you have to go back out and install them in the container. So, I, you know, it's like DDoc Manager doesn't make any sense inside the container. Um, Fig is basically just something that's auto-complete for me in my terminal, so I'm not going to use that here. Um, but just be aware that sometimes with new versions of DDEV, you know, if you are getting um, a, like a fresh container of, from a fresh image, you have to reinstall that stuff. Um, normally not a big deal, it takes a couple seconds, but just be aware of that. Okay, so let me finish going through the extensions that we're using here. So the ones that I actually have in the container that I recommend are, I, actually I don't think PHP doc blocker was on my other list, was it? No. Oh, that's a, that's a gaffe on my part. Right? Yeah, no, we need that one. we will put that one. There. PHP. Uh, is that the way it's written? PHP, okay. Sorry about that, I missed that one, but I'll put it in here so you, oh, it's on this one, but it's not there, okay. All right, so Doc Blocker is really good, especially if you're using PHP CS and PHP SEN, those two tools are going to complain about Doc Blocks or going complain they're missing. So what Doc Blocker lets you do, I'll just do a quick demo. In this serial module, let me get rid of that. Um, I guess I'll just do it here. Let's say that this constructor did not have a a dock block like that, but this is a copilot. The little gray text out, so we're gonna ignore that. So if I just do slash star star and enter with dock blocker, it kind of scaffolds the whole thing out for me. Right? It looks at my, my um, arguments, it creates a param for each one, if there was a return type, it could be an at return, it tells me I've got to find something there. So it just kind of scaffolds out what your doc block should look like. Uh, IntelliFence. IntelliFence is, you know, it, I don't know but I'm sure everyone's using IntelliFence, right? Already? If not, you're missing out. Because what does IntelliFence do? Um, Let's just find an example of something. Yeah, so this render um, does a couple things. A couple, well, it does a lot of things, but number one, it gives you the, all these autocompletes, all these, you know. Um, so VS Code is indexed and made that data available to PHP IntelliFence. So when I type this and then you know, start typing a method, it's going to give me a list of available methods for this class. This is, you know, this saves you so much time. Um, the other thing that it does, I should probably just turn off Copilot there. Um, so you can either right click, go to definitions. I know that's really small. That, yeah, there we go. Um, or probably a bit faster, I'm holding down the command key. See how it's now a link. That will bring me right to, in this case, it brought me to the variable. That's 
No, that was not my intention. I should have picked a better one. Let's try render plane. Boom. That brought me right to the render plane method of the renderer class. So if you're wondering how a method works or where that method lives, I mean, it's a command click away. That's you know, two of the many things that PHP IntelliFence brings to the table. Uh, PHP Sniffer and Beautifier, I'm going to show you what this does in a minute once we talk about configuration a little bit. Same thing for PHP Stan. PHP Unit Test Explorer, um, I really like this. I, I didn't use it for a while because I'm, I'm, just, you know, I'm just used to writing or typing uh, from the kind of like PHP Unit in the path to the class I want to run the test on or the test method. Um, but for some reason, the past few months, it's really just taken hold for me that it gives you the little beaker icon. And then um, it's, it's, right, what it's doing right now is it's scanning the code base. It'll take a second. Um, that. Scanning the code base for all tests. Right, so, and you know, these are all the tests in Drupal core and any modules I have on the site, all PHP unit tests. And you can see there's a couple of them. But, you know, image, I'll look for all the image effects tests. You know, there's a functional test there, there's a kernel test there, so we can either run all of them or we can dive in and run one of them. Just hit the button and that was pretty fast, it already passed right there. So for me, this turns out to be faster than typing or even if I typed it once, you know, if I close my terminal for some reason, I have to open the terminal, hit the up arrow, make sure I get to the right command, hit, you know, hit the, uh, the return key. This just, I find myself moving a little faster because when I'm writing a test, this just kind of stays open. And I can, you know, we can just hit this as many times as we want. No configuration for this extension either. You just add it and it'll scour your code base. Now, obviously running tests um, is all dependent on a properly configured or properly had PHP unit.xml file. So it's really hidden there. So. Um, this file is not specific to um, um, that uh, the test explorer. This is specific to running tests. So that's a whole other topic. You can ask me later tomorrow about that if you want. But um, it's not. It's 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 okay documented on Drupal.org. Uh, but this is one of those things where there's a few different ways to set up this up and where to put it. Um, uh, kind of the way I roll with a lot of this stuff, as you can see it right here, I have all of my tools and their configuration on the project route. Because um, I'm one of those people who I like to run as much as possible from the project route and not have to wonder where everything's configured. So a lot of my tools I configure right there um, on the project route, including this. I know I talk fast, so if you want me to go back and show something, just let me know. Um, yeah, and then Twig Language 2, um, I didn't even mention that in the slides, um, but it does uh, syntax uh, um, highlighting for Twig template files. So if you do a lot of theming or um, front end stuff or base template files, it's, it's handy to have. All right. So let's talk about settings files. Um, VS Code has uh, multiple levels of settings files. We're just going to talk about two of them today. We're going to talk about user settings, which I think of as global. So your user settings will affect all VS Code projects that you open. But then each project or each workspace can have its own settings as well. So these are specific to a project. Um, one thing I really like about VS Code, I don't think it's I think it's possible to do something like this in PHP Storm, but it's nowhere near as easy. Is all of the configuration for VS Code is stored in JSON files. Easily accessible JSON files and, and readable and not, you know. So rather than you know me talking about configuring things and saying, well, first you have to go to settings and then settings and then search for this or find that, you know, basically. If you do in VS Code um, Command Shift P, which is viewing the command palette, 
right there. I know that's really small. I don't know what the hotkey is on Windows or Linux. On Mac, it's Command Shift P. But if you do a Command Shift P, it brings up this command palette. And this command palette basically lets you run any menu item, any command in VS Code, even some that aren't even in the menu. It lets you do all kinds of cool stuff. You can just search for it. Um, but you can see my, my recently used top three right there. Um, open user settings, which I already have open, and open workspace settings, which I have open as well. By the way, workspace settings are stored right there. So in your project group, will be a hidden.vs code directory, a settings.json. Those are the, the VS code settings specific to your project. So I do, um, there is a, um, a link to a, I think it's a GitHub gist, it might be a GitLab snippet, I'm not sure which one I did, of all of these. So you can just sit back and watch, and if you've got the slides, you can get to it. Um, but this is kind of my default set of settings. There's actually a couple of new ones at the bottom, which will not be in the, um, in the, in the gist and stuff, but 98% of this stuff is. Um, I'm just going to go through it block by block just to kind of give you a lay of the land. This first block up here, this is just you know, kind of editor configuration that you know, does a pretty good job of matching up with Drupal coding standards. Um, file associations, you know, this basically just says that, hey, you know, treat that theme files as PHP files. Okay, so that's what they are. Um, I do have a bunch of exclusions. Um, so this excludes things from being indexed or things from being watched. When something's watched, then an extension can react at every key, um, key press in that file type. So you, know, you don't need that stuff happening inside, you know, like your Git directory and stuff like that. So just it keeps VS Code um, from scanning too much stuff. It gives it less work to do. Um, This is a little bit more of just kind of the basic Drupal coding standard stuff. Not much to see there. Um, all right. So then what I do is I, you know, I document in these files um, by extension. Right? So this section down here is kind of my odds and ends, which is the tap down. So really, PHP IntelliFence is just this. So this is basically just telling PHP and Telefence like, what code specifically we want to make sure is included in the scanning and in the indexing so that we can do things like control click on renderer and go somewhere. So pretty basic stuff there. Um, PHP itself, the language, has very basic linting. In order for that to work, we've got to point to the PHP executable. You'll notice that mine is grayed out. Well, mine is grayed out because I have overridden this in my workspace settings. So I treat this as a fallback, kind of. Because this path right here is PHP on Mac OS for me. So once I override it, this setting doesn't matter. VS Code is smart enough to know it's been overridden, so it grays out. And you can see, it's set to do PHP linting on every character I type. There's also on save, and I don't know if there's any other options in those two. Um, you know, a little twig setting for twig language two basically says, uh, you know, treat twig files or, or syntax them as HTML, syntax color them as HTML. Um, fig we're not going to worry about. But well, this is one's actually Drupal Smart Snippets. Um, I'll actually show you a demo of that one right now. I forgot somehow I missed that one. Um, this basically makes sure that our smart snippets suggestions are on top of that autocomplete. How many people use Drupal smart snippets? Yeah, those of you who don't, you're about to. Um, so, do I have a. Let's see. It doesn't really matter. I'm in a. Where am I? I'm in a format. Actually, I want to be in the widget. So, here's. Here's the only reason you really need to use Drupal Smart Snippets. Um, you know, this is like a format. Well, this is not really 
what I want is I want to build form method just for this to be an actual more realist. I guess we can do this one element. Yeah, we can do it in here. Stored settings form. How many people are around in Drupal 7 days? Right, so use form API, you might create a custom form. Remember there was that documentation page on Drupal.org, it was like a big table, it broke out, so you had to scroll way to the right, and it would show you the, I think on the, on the Y axis, it was all, it was like a text field, radio button, checkbox, and all those, and then across the Y axis, where the columns were, like all the properties. It doesn't exist anymore for modern Drupal, that's kind of it. And if you need to go find out all the properties for the auto entity, auto entity complete type, for example, that's kind of a pain. I, I honestly, I still don't know where to look. I don't know where like the canonical, you know, documentation for that is. Luckily, I don't care anymore because if I want to do element, you know, I'm just going to call it Mike equals, I can now just do at form element. This is Drupal Smart Snippets. And this is the reason why I want good stuff on top, because there's a lot of stuff that comes up. Well, it, not in this case, actually. But I can go down to, uh, what did I say I was looking for? Where is that? Damn, I one demo in my head. It, like, I don't know where it went. Entity autocomplete. Maybe I don't have a module installed? It's definitely core. I don't know why it's not there. But, but let's pretend that you know, I just need a password confirmation form on it. Boom. It kind of, it just gives me the basic, it doesn't give me all of them. So granted, if I wanted to do something, you know, a little bit edge casey with this, I would still have to go to api.drupal.org. But, you know, it gives me the basics. So that alone is, is worth the price of admission for me. Um, but it also gives you render elements, um, and then it also gives you, let me get rid of that, I'm gonna break this module. Uh, where's my dot module file? I'll just put it in here. It also gives you, if you want to, you know, a core, if you need access to a core service, it doesn't do dependency injection, it just kind of does it with the, the Drupal static service method. But still, I mean, at service, you find the unique identifier, it even does the, the type hint for you. That's pretty freaking awesome, if you ask me. So again, I know I'm going fast, forgive me. That is Drupal Smart Snippets. So I can't recommend that one enough um, oh, by the way, that one you don't actually have to install in the container. So that one will just, you install it once on in here and yeah, there it is. So Andy Blue is the author of that. He's very active in the community. We've seen a lot, a lot of events. All right, what do we got? We got okay, 12 minutes left. That's fast. All right, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's get back. Okay, no, we got to finish up our settings. Right, so just a few more we'll talk about here. Um, I don't know what this setting does. It's for IntelliFence. It's not even a real URL. I've tried, I've tried putting crazy or crazy files and it doesn't have, for me, I can't, I don't know what it does. So I, I leave it in there even though it's wrong. If someone can figure it out what it actually does and let me know, I'd, I'd love to find out. Um, I actually turn off the basic PHP suggestions that VS Code provides, and I actually think it's the PHP IntelliFence. Um, um, oh no. I've actually looked into this before. Yeah, I turn off the VS Code ones in lieu of IntelliFences. That way those autocomplete drop downs don't get too populated. Um, this is kind of a nice one. When you use um, IntelliFence has snippets that can add to your code, like switch statements and stuff like that. You can tell it what style braces you want, like whether you want the, um, like something the params, then a space, and then the brace right after that versus the brace on the next line. So this K and R, um, someone told me what this means, I think yesterday. This basically just follows the Drupal code instead. So. And then the rest is to do list stuff that I like on mine. Um, yeah, so. That's my kind of my default base user settings. 
And then where the, where the good stuff comes in is in the, um, the overrides. And this is the entire file. So this is my workspace settings. And this is kind of what hooks everything up and for me is really the, the price of admission for, for today. Is we can point to what's the execute. So this is for just uh, uh, PHP linting and probably IntelliFence provides this. But this path right here it's not my Mac OS path, it's my DDEV container path. Meaning, where did I put it? It's over here. I give DDEV SSH, clear, which PHP? PHP in my container lives at user bin PHP, boom, user bin PHP. What's the, and so for the PHP sniffer and beautifier extension, that extension's job is to run PHP CS for me, gather the results, and present them to me, not on the command line, but on the problems tab. That's the whole point. And not only the problems tab, but it will give me the little red squiggle in code. So again, how do I run PHP CS? Which PHP in the container? It's that path. Copy. Close some of this. So if you're using Lando or Doxel or something, you know, these paths are going to be a little different, but everything else I showed you is pretty much just going to work. And Lando, instead of var, dot, 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 is going to be slash app, slash vendor. I don't know what it is in Doxel by default. But you can see, so PHP sniffer and beautifier, we got a point on our executables. Um, this is kind of like the PHP unit configuration file. This one you have to set up as well. Um, but there's Drupal.org has some good um, documentation on that. I'm happy to share this if anybody wants mine. Uh, you know, whether or not they're enabled and the mode, this one's on tight. Uh, if something's wonky with it, you can debug it. Um, and then very similar for PHP stack. Kill switch. This puts a little you know, bar down here. It tells you when it's running because PHP stand, if you're, if you're doing static analysis and a lot of code, that could take more than a couple seconds. Um, and then, you know, a path to the binary and a path to the uh, config file. Um, and you do need a config file. A dot, don't be afraid of a dot neon file because it, it looks suspiciously like a YAML file, <laughs> right? And it basically just tells you that temp directory is unimportant, by the way. I was experimenting with something. That's really all you need. Um, so the web slash modules path, that just makes it so that PHP stan um, doesn't start you know, checking like core files or vendor files. I kind of keep it limited. Kind of keep it in a sandbox a little bit. So what does all this stuff get you? Well, when you are developing, let me close most of these files just so we can have a clean problems tab. We'll just open this one. Control tick. Problems. I wish I could actually here, let me do this. I'm gonna do um, I use this reload window a lot. It's almost like a VS code rebuild caches command. Alright, so it'll like rerun everything. There we go. So well, yeah, there's Quite a few issues, although some of this might have to do with the fact that I deleted the constructor. Yeah, and a lot of that was my fault because I messed with the constructor there. But, you know, you can see now we have, like, these are all issues reported from PHP CS. And then somewhere, oh, well, there's one at the very bottom. Well, I'll watch it. There's some issues reported on PHP stand. So now I don't have to remember to run those tools. They run, and my tool complains to me. My tool's like, hey, PHP stand is not like that. You better fix that. And I like that. For me, that works. That type of nudging and that type of, you know, the red squiggle shame that I feel, <laughs> right? I want to get rid of those. I want to fix those. Um, how many people use PHP stand regularly? Oh, it's a great freaking tool. Irregularly? <laughs> I cannot, I can't recommend it enough. Um, and I'm going to talk about it for a minute because I am a big fan of it. It has made me such a better PHP developer because of this fact right here. 
It's not, but PHP CS, you just run it, and it tells you all of the issues. PHP Span allows you to tell it how strict you want it to be. So there's 10 levels, 0 through 9. So you can start at level 0. And if you don't get any issues at level 0, okay, great. Let me try running PHP Span at level 1. And then level 2, and with each level, it adds more checks, and it gets a little more stringent. Um, Drupal Core is only level 1. To get Drupal Core to level two is going to be a huge effort because there's so many like little changes. Um, these days, I actually strive for all of my work, contributing contrib custom, to be level five or six. Getting past six is really hard because a lot of the issues that that crop up have to do with um, either return types or parameters in functions that aren't documented specifically enough in Drupal core. And it's like something I can't fix in my module. So it's a great tool. I can't, Matt Glamen, the, 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 the leading force behind PHP stand uh, for the Drupal community is here. So find him tomorrow and corner him and he'll be happy to show you, you know, show you how it works or I will as well. All right. Four minutes. Well, We'll finish something. You go to speak fast. Yeah, I think we're, I, I, yeah. So here's a, you know, you'll have access to the slide. So this is my user settings, Jason. That's my workspace settings, Jason. I just demoed PHP stand and PHP CS for you in the problems tab. Um, Drupal smart snippets I just showed you as well. Auto completes all the, you know really good stuff. Um, Intel Fence, I showed you this. You know, command click or right click and go to definition. It also had code completion and useful, you know, PHP snippets and a lot more. Uh, this is a, a freemium extension. So there's a free version and a paid version. Um, I hate to say this, but the free version is fantastic. I paid for the, for the pro version uh, at some point, um, but I stopped paying for it because I wasn't using any of those features regularly. So the free version is great. Um, I'm not going to have time to, to demo the debug stuff to get us out of here on time, but if you've never set up a Visual Studio Code with PHP debug, um, this will, um, uh, this will I'll show it to you. It's not zero configuration as it is in PHP Storm. Um, you have to set up a file like, well, I have two of these in here. I should not have two of these. I'm going to get rid of one. You gotta set up a okay. You gotta set up a file like this, which is basically the same thing that the PHP Storm needs to do. Like what port am I listening to? And um, you actually don't even have to set up the path mappings here because you're inside the machine. <laughs> so there's no path mappings, which kind of makes it easier than PHP Storm. Um, so this file is up on the other side of this bit.ly link. Um, once you're inside the DDEV container, so here's something you may or may not know if you use DDEV. From outside the DDEV container, we use what? DDEV X debug on. And X debug off. When you're inside the container, well, here, I'll do it here. When you are inside the container, enable X debug, disable X debug. This is a DDEV thing, not a Lambda thing, so, or not a Docker thing, so that's specific to DDEV, but that's good to know because you're, we're living inside the container. Just about done here. I showed you Unit Test Explorer. Saves me a lot of time. Um, there are actually there are other options available, but I just pick the defaults and then does it up to me. Uh, if you don't use the settings.local.php file, you should be. Another shame. If you don't use PHP Storm or this, wow. Sad. Um, yeah, so other stuff I use. Yeah, so Twig Language 2 extension I mentioned. I like to-do lists. So what the to-do highlights extension does has nothing to do with Drupal or any of this stuff, but you can do an app to-do in your code, and then you get a little to-do tab down where your problems and terminal are. That shows you all of your to-do items throughout your code, so that's good. Um, oh yeah, I, I do mention this. Uh, so this is the page, the Drupal.org page we talked about. 
You don't need empty indent. I really should edit the page to get rid of this. But you do not need to install that extension anymore. Um, Composer extension, I just learned about this a month or so ago. I added it here. I haven't played with it yet. Um, anybody use any extensions for Drupal development that I haven't mentioned that I'm missing? No? No? Fine. Yeah, there's my course again, and there, that's it. And there are the slides to this. Right on time. Right on time. Right on time. All right. I'll be around the rest of the day. I'll be at the party tonight. I'll be around most of the day tomorrow. If you have any questions about this, if you have trouble getting any of this stuff set up, just find me. Happy to demo it and uh, have a great, go to lightning talks. Lightning talks are a lot of fun. So, oh no, that's not, what time is that? What time, this is 4.15? Somebody have a schedule? I'm gonna hit the button. Four.